from the station that sees the possible. This is Channel 3 News, brought to you by Universal Windows Direct. You'll be saying, I love my windows. And now, Channel 3 News. Together, we will lead our party back to the White House. It's a done deal. The 2016 Republican National Convention is over. Donald Trump just wrapping up the biggest speech of his life, accepting the nomination, and making his case against Hillary Clinton. Everybody that I've met has been gracious and welcoming, regardless of their political persuasion. Tens of thousands of delegates, journalists, officers, and demonstrators will soon say farewell to Cleveland, setting the stage for a record-setting day at Hopkins tomorrow. But tonight, there's still time to have fun and take in the sights one last time. We'll check in on East 4th, where the party continues. Hey, good evening. As you can see and hear behind us, the confetti is still flowing, the music still blaring, but the historic four days for Cleveland are coming to an end. The 2016 Republican National Convention is now history. We dig into the analysis from senior political correspondent Tom Barris in just a moment. But first, Chris Ty joins us live from the convention floor tonight with highlights from Donald Trump. The big night, Chris, the speech just ending. How did it go over? It went over well in this hall, Sarah and Russ, but it was long, an hour and 18 minutes by our count. Donald Trump, not typically a strong teleprompter speaker, but tonight he delivered a very strong message. At certain points, the crowd shouted, build that wall, and about Hillary Clinton, lock her up. He shouted back, let's just beat her in November. The crowd cheered, the balloons fell, and Cleveland, for the second time in two months, had a historic night in the queue. And I could not be more proud tonight to present to you and to all of America my father and our next president, Donald J. Trump. Night number four was a night for Donald Trump to put a convention that's gone off the tracks more than once back on them. I humbly and gratefully accept your nomination for the presidency of the United States. He painted a grim economy in this country and a weakened role in the world, putting the blame on a group of leaders, most notably one person. That is why Hillary Clinton's message is that things will never change, never ever. My message is that things have to change, and they have to change right now. His message was clear. Using his trademark blunt and direct style, he is the only option. Nobody knows the system better than me, which is why I alone can fix it. Tonight, we heard Trump as a fixer, and Trump as more compassionate. A far cry from the your fired, fired caricature guy. many of us know him as. I have embraced crying mothers who have lost their children because our politicians put their personal agendas before the national good. The national good is one thing, but great is the word used most. The man who promised to make America great for months struck a chord in this room. The question, though, did this speech and this final night resonate in American living rooms? He ended with a fresh pledge and raucous approval. My opponent asks her supporters to recite a three-word loyalty pledge. It reads, I'm with her. I choose to recite a different pledge. My pledge reads, I'm with you, the American people. He owned the room, but there were a few hiccups along the evening. It appeared as though the same woman who disrupted proceedings the other night was back at it again tonight with that pink, white, and black-lettered banner up in the stands. Unclear what it read. Trump used that moment to say thank you to our police and how much we love Cleveland. Turned a negative into a positive. But here is the imagery that will really be resonating tomorrow, tonight online, and in your newspaper in the weekend ahead. It is the balloons falling. We've seen them up in the raft for days here at the queue, and they fell moments after Mike Pence and Donald Trump took the stage after that hour and 18-minute speech. And simultaneously, 
As that was going on inside, this was going on outside. Fireworks from over the Cuyahoga River so that this event wasn't limited just inside this venue. It was something for all of Northeast Ohio to see. Russ and Sarah, there is a closing prayer going on behind us. And while the politics of this are in the forefront right now, it is a conclusion of an amazing week, buttoned up an amazing month in Cleveland with very few hiccups along the way in this city. The pride in Cleveland tonight is it's tangible. You can feel it in the air. People are happy. The party is satisfied. And Cleveland going down as a remarkable success. All right, Chris Tide, thank you so much. And our senior political correspondent, Tom Barris, is here now. And Tom, as Chris pointed out, Donald Trump speaks for an hour and 18 minutes. In your mind, how did it go? Well, it certainly was the most comprehensive, complete, item-by-item -item list of every single thing that he wants to do. What was lacking a little bit, though, were details. What we got were a lot of exclamation points. But yes, he's going to build a wall. Yes, he's going to somehow find a way to stop immigration from uh, uh, countries that are hotbeds of, uh, of terrorism. Uh, yes, he's going to crack down on law and order. Yes, he's going to somehow make ISIS disappear. Uh, but again, no specifics, no details, no price tags. So again, we have no doubt where Donald Trump stands on all these issues and his bold proclamations to fix it. If you were already a Donald Trump fan. Uh, this obviously revved you up and intensified your feelings. Uh, if uh, you're not a, a Donald Trump admirer, well, the emotion of it probably revved you up with uh, an opposite feelings, but he did not make any new dramatic or uh, antagonistic proposals. So he is leaving Cleveland, uh, completing his hostile takeover of the Republican Party. Uh, is the party leaving here lockstep, unified behind him? Well, no, not absolutely. Obviously, most of the people here, with the, some exceptions, including the Ohio delegation, are all on board with him. But the Republican Party outside, the party that didn't attend, still uh, not on board with him. So what we're going to have to see is what kind of a bounce does he get in the polls? There's already a poll out tonight. Shows him getting an 11-point improvement. Uh, poll taken over the first three days of the convention. Reuters poll. He was 15 points behind Hillary. Now he's 11. Or excuse me. Now he's four points behind. Okay. He did talk a lot about his opponent tonight, Hillary Clinton. She'll get her chance to respond next week. What did you think uh, of his comments about her tonight? Well, again, this is kind of unusual that you have the conventions absolutely back to back. So he gets the chance to uh, set the table for Hillary. And again, he vilified her as uh, uh, the, the source of nothing but death, destruction, and weakness. Um, and a uh, Ohio poll, Ohio poll out today has one interesting uh, figure in it. Says that 9% of 9% uh, of uh, the people who are going to vote for Hillary Clinton would consider voting for Donald Trump. 1% of those voting for Trump would vote for Clinton. All right, Tom Barris, thank you. Sure. Well, as quickly as it all came together, it will be taken apart as the convention is cleared from the streets of Cleveland. Channel 3's Hillary Goldston is live with how long it could take to put the city back together again. Hi, Hillary. Hi there, Russ and Sarah. Certainly the Grand Old Party had a wonderful dynamite party. Those fireworks we just witnessed were explosive. And so were the celebrations this, this week. And inevitably, whenever you have a big party, there's a lot to clean up, a lot to button up. But with the way that Cleveland is feeling right now, we don't mind. The truck's rolling in. And on standby for the countdown, teardown crews have been watching. The end of the RNC. Fun little factoid. Turns out many of these trucks will actually get the stuff from the queue and then take it to where else? The Democratic National Convention happening in Philly. Why waste a good thing, right? An RNC host committee spokesperson tells me as soon as the program ends, crews will descend on the queue and that secure perimeter. <laughs> Hundreds of barricades to take down, cleaning up countless balloons. <laughs> And pulling up all that carpet, not to mention clearing out suites turned media boots. Over at Media Row, things are already being broken down, even before Donald Trump's speech begins. So after Trump's speech, we're going to take the equipment here. So, Do you expect it's going to take you a while? I mean, this is I hope pretty loud. <laughs> I certainly hope not. Are you ready to tear down? Oh, yes. Thank you. Please, can I leave now? Can I leave before the speech? 
How long do you think it's going to take you to get all this stuff out of here? A lot of equipment. Uh, probably a couple of hours. We have so much stuff, radio, TV, internet stuff. It's a lot going on over here. The Grand Old Party's biggest party is over. Now comes the after party. And after the after party is, of course, that very big cleanup. Now, here is another interesting thing. By early August is when officials with the RNC tell me that the queue should be restored to its former glory. And over on East 4th, where we have that MSNBC set, all of that packed up and ready to go by 3 in the morning. So those crews will certainly be working through the night, Sarah. Absolutely. Lots of work ahead. Thanks, Hillary. And coming up tonight, farewell RNC. We'll tell you how TSA and Hopkins are preparing for a record number of travelers tomorrow. Plus, while most will be flying home tomorrow, tonight it is time to party. We will check in on a hopping East 4th Street. Hi, Betsy. Hi there, Russ and Sarah. Well, while things fired up in the queue, they fizzled in the atmosphere. The rain did not make it to Northeast Ohio, but we're not completely dry yet. We'll have details on what to expect for your forecast for tomorrow and beyond. Next. It is now Friday morning as delegates begin to pour out of the queue after their big party tonight. I should say in one minute it will be Friday morning as delegates start piling out here and we're hearing balloons popping, the balloons that fell tonight as the 2016 Republican National Convention comes to a close. And Cleveland Hopkins preparing for a potentially record-breaking day as thousands of RNC visitors head home. Carly Flynn Morgan joins us now with how out-of-towners viewed our city and how TSA plans to get all of them back home. Hi, Carly. Hey, Sarah and Russ, the TSA will bring in a huge amount of extra resources tomorrow. It could be the busiest day this airport has ever seen. But as these people leave, we hope they want to come back for more. The whole city is awesome. The police staff, we're safe, we're happy. It's, it's an unbelievable experience. It wasn't hard to find people singing praises for Cleveland. Everybody that I've met has been gracious and welcoming, regardless of their political persuasion. From wonderful weather to stunning scenery and pretty peaceful protests, it's clear we've turned visitors into believers. Even the national media and politicians themselves couldn't hold back. There were the NBA champs and downtown has been restored because people got together shoulder to shoulder and worked their way forward. The police and the security people have done a fabulous job and it's been a good convention. I love Cleveland and they're doing a great job and the police are doing an incredible job. But all good things must come to an end. The TSA says 18,000 people will fly home Friday, 30% more than a normal busy day. So they'll add 60 extra screeners, checkpoints will open 30 minutes earlier than usual, 3.30 a.m., and every available checkpoint will open all day. I'm hoping you expect a, an easy time through the airport. Clevelanders and the TSA hoping travelers end their stay on a high note. It's just amazing, just totally amazing. The TSA suggests that tomorrow you arrive two hours before your flight. Even though they have prepared to get you through security quickly, you could still get backed up when it comes to ticketing, parking, and traffic to the airport. Reporting live at Cleveland Hopkins International Airport, Carly Flynn Morgan, Channel 3 News. Carly, at an empty Hopkins Airport, it's going to get crowded, it's going to get crazy in just a matter of hours. Thank you so much. Well, another thing that impressed a lot of our visitors, Russ, was the weather. I have seen people writing about it. That's right. And Betsy Kling, we've got to thank you. <laughs> yeah. I know she was in charge bottling that sunshine. <laughs> we win. We win. Yeah. We got lucky I, on that, right? I, absolutely. It is just one of those fluky things that every now and then you hit an, a gold streak, and that's what we did. <laughs> it's just been phenomenal this week. And now that everyone is leaving, we have a heat wave coming in, and we have heat advisories issued for tomorrow and for Saturday already. And there are some storm chances that we've been keeping an eye on. Let's take a look at how tomorrow will start off. Warm and muggy with clouds and sun. 
there could be some showers and thunderstorms. I'll show you that in coming up in just a few minutes, but uh, as of right now, it looks like the radar is clear to the north of us. But in the afternoon, the heat of the day will have a chance to have some triggers left over, and that could spark another round of scattered storms as we head through the afternoon. This is what we were watching earlier this evening. Okay, we had the thunderstorms that were coming through Michigan coming at us. They hit and just dissipated completely fizzled. But this big thunderstorm complex is rolling beautifully across northern parts of Illinois and likely to hit back into the Mississippi River Valley. What we have not seen is a lot of development here in Michigan, which is what we were watching to see if those thunderstorms would develop and we would inherit those in the morning. That being said, there's still some energy that comes along with all of this. And as that energy makes it into northern Ohio tomorrow morning, that could spark some showers and thunderstorms. So there's nothing to track as of right now, but it's certainly going to be a situation where we'll have thunderstorms possible anytime. The thunderstorms that came in earlier fizzled because our air is just a little bit drier than the incredibly humid air that is set up across the Mississippi River Valley. These yellows, that's where the dew points are in the 70s. And this this oppressive humidity will slowly but surely march eastward and that puts us in line for it. Now you have high heat, you have a lot of humidity and there's the excessive heat warnings that have been issued by the National Weather Service and there's a ring of heat advisories around that. Basically this is that bubble of hot air where it is expected to really have big impacts and it will continue to move eastward. As a matter of fact, Washington DC and Baltimore where our Indians are, uh, the tribe is over in Baltimore for the weekend. That's a, a heat watch so they are going to have that heat going right with them to the east. Now, around that bubble of hot air, we have the circulation of all these storms as they fire up. So as we go through the night tonight, we will keep an eye to the north, but more likely than not, it's just that little bit of energy I talked about coming in that may spark off some of the showers and thunderstorms tomorrow. We'll be in the 70s to start quickly climbing through the 80s, and I think we will land in the low 90s as we go through the afternoon. Here's a chance for those showers to start to pop up in the morning. And those chances will continue as we head into the afternoon as well. Temperatures will be dependent upon how much cloud cover we have and if we get these rain showers. If we have clouds, if we have the rain, the temperatures will be lower. But I'm accounting for not having so much rain, and it does look like we'll be in the 90s. But certainly by the evening, it'll be a great night to get out and get downtown once again to enjoy because it is going to be beautiful. You're going to have to navigate your way around the cleanup, but it's going to be fantastic. South southwest winds 10 to 15 for the day tomorrow on the lake with waves at two feet or less. And as far as your window nation forecast goes, there's your low 90s and that's going to continue as we go through the weekend again excessive. No, pardon me. Heat advisory is going to go through Saturday and will cool back into the 80s for next week. Russ and Sarah. And if folks go down tomorrow, they may actually be able to get into a restaurant. How about oh, that? It, you've <laughs> got to get out and get to the restaurants. They are ready for everybody to get back downtown. All right, Betsy, thanks so much. Coming up, let the party continue. We will take you to the after party hot spots on this final night of the convention. The patios are packed. We head out to East 4th Street. Stay tuned. Why do you like Donald Trump? It's a question we've seen on social media. In this segment, Verify, reporter David Schechter takes non-journalists along with him to get their questions answered. Well, tonight he takes one here to the Republican convention to find out what delegates think about their nominee. Laura Jones has been along for the ride this week, experiencing the Republican convention for herself. Mixing politics with polite conversation is rarely a good idea, but what the heck, this is a political convention. Well, I'd love to hear from them, why, why, are you, why are you supporting Donald Trump? So can we ask them that question? Of course. So I helped round up members of state delegations from around the country, like Jacob from Texas. So Jacob, can you tell me a little bit about your reasons for supporting Donald Trump as the candidate? Well, I supported Ted Cruz originally, but I believe that we need to remain a strong party united behind our nominee. From Pennsylvania, Laura Schisler. What do you like the most about Trump as a candidate? I voted for Cruz in our Pennsylvania primaries, all right? Do you like Donald Trump? I do. I really like Donald Trump now. I really, really do. Bob is an elected state representative in Arkansas. Can you tell us a little bit about um, you know, how you feel about Donald Trump as a candidate? 
Well, I mean, what I'd say is that he needs to stop being a polarizing candidate if he wants to get elected, so especially within his own party. How are you feeling um, as uh, Trump has received the nomination? Well, I mean, this is the thing is that Trump wasn't my guy, but Hillary is definitely would be terrible for our country. Laura's questions are answered. So what did she learn? Of the people we talked to, what did you hear about the conviction for the candidate for Trump? I didn't hear a lot of conviction for the candidate. I heard, you know, conviction for we're going to stand behind the party, but I didn't necessarily hear a huge amount of conviction for Donald Trump. How are Republicans feeling about their candidate for president? If you can't ask that question here, where can you? For Verify, I'm David Schechter. Well, trendy bars and restaurants were turned into media row, and there has been a ton of activity all day long here in downtown, particularly along East 4th Street. That is right. As folks continue to leave here tonight, many visitors are still headed to East 4th to party the night away. That's where Alyssa Raymond is right now. Alyssa, what can you tell us? Hi, Russ. Hi, Sarah. It's so busy here as delegates are coming out of the convention center. And I think a lot of people that live in Northeast Ohio that witness this, they're going to go to sleep tonight, wake up tomorrow morning and think it's a dream. And then they're going to realize that this was the reality. A lot of people got used to seeing this. The delegates leaving the convention center, lights up everywhere, national media outlets here. This is what it's all about. And this is what people had to say who visited and who lived here. It's been a little bit of circus, um, some for good and some for bad, but uh, you know what, all in all, Clevelanders have stuck together and kind of kind of risen up above it, um, but it's a good look for our city. We look good on national TV. Cleveland is a beautiful city, clean, the people are so very beautiful, respectful, very nice city. We're both Democrats, but we think RNC for Cleveland has been fabulous. It's wonderful for the city. We just wanted to be part of the excitement, and so we're here, and it's great. You know, we're here. We'll be here tomorrow. And remember, this is the last night that these bars will be open until 4 a.m., and it's going to be packed, and there's so much excitement out here, and a lot of people are going to take advantage here and visitors. Back to you in the studio. Yep, looks like nobody's going home. Alyssa Raymond, be careful out there. We'll see you soon. We'll be right back after this. Wow, no matter what side of the aisle you are on politically, you have to say everybody's going to vote for Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> what a fantastic week, an historic week. Everybody, pat yourself on the back. Something we've been looking forward to for such a long time here as a city preparing for, and to have it go off like this without a hitch on the city's side, right. just a great night for all of us here in Cleveland. So many kudos to go around. Congratulations. Channel 3 News today begins at 4.30 a.m.